Hello everyone, I'm Trisha, it's me, Jenny, it's time for another Not Naked Viewer Response to Trisha, which is a series of Naked Truth, where we talk as candidly and the truth, because it's possible to put somebody to for choosing straight out the shower and make it wet with hair. First take one, take most people choose to naked, I choose not to, but either way, it's not a naked, sexy damn thing. It's at all for the blogger to be vulnerable and honest. And, oh, my hair is so wet today, like, you can see it just soaking into my shirt, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But, there we go. Um, so, <laughs> today's subject is swearing um, and cursing in general, and it's very, yeah, um, so I'm definitely on on, the, on this scale of swearers, I would consider myself a one to two. Um, I try not to swear um, as often as I possibly can, um, and it's because, for me, it's I'm, I'm not against swearing, I think language really does truly have its place, um, particularly bad language has its place, like it, it's there for a reason, it's developed for a reason, um, but for me I like to save up my swears so that if I do actually drop an F-bomb, um, they know it means something, um, whoever I'm talking to means something. Now ideally I would like to never have to drop off, like for example at work I would never like to drop an F-bomb at work, I would like to have enough authority that I can say to someone, I'm really angry with you right now, this is what you've just did, done, this is why it's not an appropriate, you are going to have to stop doing this and I'd like to be able to say that in a calm collected manner with enough force behind it that it proves the point however things like explanations like stubbing my toe I think I really would like if I broke a leg I'd like to be able to swear and I will um but equally oh my hair is so wet today oh my gosh it's ridiculous okay um equally <laughs> um uh, I, I try and avoid doing it, um, but one of the things that I, I say, and it, now that I'm saying it out loud it sounds totally awful, but um, I say, um, uh, oh god, not in mixed company, um, which sounds awful, it sounds like, ew, we don't talk to the, the, the downstairs people, no, it means not, like, not without, like, within a specific demographic of people who are all on the same page, absolutely, when you mix those demographics it becomes a lot more complicated. For example, at work there was a time where I walked into a room and the people having conversation were a bunch of clients who were elderly men <laughs> who were having a locker room conversation. Nothing I hadn't heard, nothing I hadn't heard coming in from the other area of my work. Like I'd literally come out of one room where people were effing and blinding and shouting and just which is conversational, and I came into this other room where it was clients who were having a private event and they were having a locker room conversation and a bunch of older men having a locker room conversation and then, while off work, having a social social event um, while a young female comes in who is working they immediately clammed up, they were horrified, like, like it wasn't because they thought that, I presume, I could, I could be wrong, I mean, they could have thought this, um, but th th there was, like, an attitude of horror in that, like, um, maybe she's never heard a swear word before, um, type sort of, mother clamming up, and it wasn't because of that, in my opinion, I think it was just because, you know, the conversations you have with your peers, or in a certain context, is very different to the conversations you would have if there was people who were outside of that context, when I'm playing Cards Against Humanity with my friends, I'm gonna use swear words. I'm going to use inappropriate terms. And like, it's one of those things that, I'll come back to that in a moment actually. But equally, when I'm with my parents, I'm not gonna swear that much. But if we're all drinking and we're all having a relaxed time and we're watching a comedy program, we might swear. Um, my dad does not swear. 99.9% .9 of the time, but the moment he gets on to the phone with some of his university friends, he swears like a sailor. Like, it, it's it's not mixing, not, not in mixed company, um, is what I was brought up to kind of process, and it makes a lot of sense for me. Like, if I'm chatting with my sisters and we're all swearing, fine. If I'm chatting with my boss or at work, um, depending on the department, like there's some departments I would never swear in front of, but there's other departments where you go in and it's literally just a swear storm, um, and you know, it's almost antisocial not to swear in that context. Um, I try not to swear at work anyway because for me I feel like I need to save up those swears and um, so that when I do it really means something, um, and I like to think for me as a professional worker, for me personally, in my department, if I get into the habit of swearing, I'm going to get into trouble. I'm going to get into a lot of trouble with clients, um, I'm going to get in trouble with my colleagues. I've got to set a good example too. There's a lot of younger members of staff that I am senior to, and, and there's a lot of older members of staff that I'm senior to. So for me to present myself as a professional, I don't swear. 
as much as I possibly can and to the point where I've kind of got into the habit of using alternatives I say sugar I say crumbs I say blimey I say oh golly I say quite um, I, I've gotten to the point where like I will stub my toe and it will really hurt and I'll be like fudge sugar Mm. Um, sometimes when I do spill sugar at work when I'm like doing a tea round or whatever um, <laughs> that's always, that always makes me laugh as well like if I've, I've spilled sugar everywhere I'll be like sugar um, crumbs um, and I give a shout out to the hot fuzz um, pre-watershed cut and the um, and, and Children of the Dead pre-watershed cut and also the um, uh, the good place. So um, for those of you in America <laughs> or across the pond or wherever, um, in, in the UK we have something called the watershed which is basically no mature content can be shown pre 9am, 9pm, 9pm on UK television um, and it's called the watershed um, and mostly that means like swears and sexual content. Um, so for Hot Fuzz there is an edit of Hot Fuzz which is featured on the blooper reel, same for Shaun of the Dead which is featured on the DVDs, um, which is where they've um, overdubbed the swears and they're fantastic. They're like um, bar steward, bar stool, uh, peas and rice instead of Jesus Christ, um, uh, uh, you funker, um, uh, son of a wench, um, and I'm pronouncing this very specifically, cullunt, cullunt. Um, <laughs> and it's great. So a lot of those ones are really good. When if you, if you really want to swear, um, you can. Um, equally, sometimes people will query that. And they'll be like, "What did you just say?" So I, I when I was, uh, I, I must have watched Hot Fuzz once because I was still in school, and I used the word clunt on the bus, and people were like, "Oh my god, Jenny just said the c word! Oh my god!" And it was a big thing. So in in many ways, it's better to kind of veer away into the silly ones like mother hugger uh, ones which are more easily separated from the original form because when I was a teenager and I'd learnt my swear words um, and you think you're being so smart and I can remember being like mum you're such a witch and it was it, like it wasn't ill intentioned it was just pushing those boundaries and being like ooh don't ducking tell me what to do um, and it was really petty and immature and dumb but it was it was practicing those limits and it's because you're not saying the words it doesn't have the same thing but like there's some words that I do like peas and rice it's great um I was brought up again not particularly a religious family although mum and dad do occasionally still attend church um but my grandparents were particularly religious growing up and uh, so to use Christ's name rain was a no-no um so I was brought up saying Jesus Christ on a bicycle as the swear so if you go Jesus Christ on a bicycle um, it's not using God's name in vain, it's describing him doing an action. <laughs> um, or, yeah, so Jesus Christ on a bicycle! <laughs> I say that all the time. Um, yeah, so th there's a lot of really good ones. Um, I also really like doing tongue twisters, like the um, My life as a mother pheasant plucker is pleasant, just listening to music as I pluck mother pheasants. Yes, I'm a pleasant pheasant plucker and nobody's ever heard of another mother pheasant plucker like me say the F word. Um, which I love, I love that one. Um, and I, I like I like playing with words, and words should be played with. Words are an organic, ever-evolving thing, and I think it'll be really interesting to see in the next hundred years where language goes, because I think the words that still have the most impact are the words that still have a taboo subject, and so things like the F word, I think, are going to slowly fall out of the vernacular of rudeness, because hopefully sexual expression is less taboo. Um, we can have more discussions on these things so therefore that subject will become less taboo. Um, I think words which are more racially hateful, more homophobic, hopefully will progress into the more taboo. Um, like the n-word is a word that I would never ever say. It's just not appropriate. I will never ever say that. Um, the um, uh, a, for example, a ball of uh, wood used for lighting a fire is a faggot. I would never use that word outside of a ball of wood used for lighting a fire. <laughs> like that is, it's a terrible horrible word. Um, there's a couple of words I try not to use but occasionally do, do slip out. Um, several T words. Um, not twit. Let's go with not twit. I will say twit um, but I won't say those words which have a lot of gender connotations. Um, the C word I don't like. 
and also the problem with the c word is i don't use it even when i'm at my angriest because not only do I not like the context and the meaning behind it, um, I also don't like the fact that, well, it's, it's just, I, I was kind of, I was introduced to it too late in life for it to have an impact for me. Like the F word, when, when you really need to put it down and say it, like, it feels impactful. Um, I wasn't introduced to the C word until very, very late. Um, I remember, uh, I think it was Hot Fuzz. I think it was Hot Fuzz that introduced me to the C word. Um, I don't know what, that was only like 10 years ago. Um, but I can remember um, when I was channel hopping one time and I flipped onto Big Brother, UK Big Brother, um, and they said that word and I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it, but I remember my mum jumping in front of the TV, blocking the TV and saying, you will never ever say that word. Um, and I, I didn't even hear the word, or at least if I did hear it, I didn't register it on a conscious level enough to know what word it was. <laughs> it wasn't until years later, where after watching Hot Fuzz, I was like, that must have been the word that Mum died in front of the TV and told us never to say. Um, and there's a lot of, like, cultural swear words, like, um, there's certain swear words which, as I said, are going to become part of the vernacular, but things like bugger, bloody hell, like, damn, like, damn, if you put it in a religious concept, it means that you are literally fundamentally cursing someone to hell forever if you put it in that context um while you know buggery or bugger like it, it can just be a a, a non-swear swear like i think i'd use bugger every once in a while but in its of itself it can be very offensive um so it, it's all to do with context like i will give someone a sharp look particularly at work if they use the c word um if they use um the the ball of wood um, word, um, like anything like that, and honestly I hope to call people if they use racial words because that's just not appropriate and it's not ever appropriate no matter what the context. Um, I just, I, like there's certain words that I think shouldn't be appropriate uh, if they are racially or hate motivated um, or homophobically or trans. Like th I think there's going to be a transition within the next 10 years in terms of certain transphobic words that will become definitely a lot more taboo um and language is ever evolving who knows who knows where we'll go in the next 20 to 30 years um equally i can remember like as i said my dad never really swears i can remember we got off the ferry on the way to france one time and he drove on the wrong side of the road and i can remember that was the first time i ever remember him saying the f word and he like slammed on the brakes and was like um, it was great. It was great. Um, obviously, I, I, I think I was too young to really understand what he'd said, but I can remember just it was, it was more the attitude of the use of the word rather than the word itself. Like, as I said, there's some certain, certain departments that use f words and all sorts as just vocabulary. Um, uh, there's one. There's one person who's um, a boss of another department who would literally just be like, "What the f is this? Look at all of this." crap like that's that's shit that shit that shit your f shit um and he says it like some of it has genuine impact some of it's joking it's all to do with con context of the hour um but if my boss were to use those languages just generally without there being a reason like if there's a reason then absolutely if, if something has gone completely and utterly tits up and my boss were to use language like that i'll be like absolutely fine if this one were to use those languages, I'd be like, I don't know, I can't read him. Um, but for him, like, um, like there's sometimes when he doesn't swear, but he's so aggressive um, that that has a greater impact. Um, there's one of my um, one of my colleagues who he very rarely swears, but sometimes he will shout or make noises or s just bang things which I find a lot more actively makes me uncomfortable than swearing. Um, language has its role, has its place, but yeah. Um, I can remember growing up, um, my dad did wash my mouth out with soap, I think twice. Um, and again, that was experimental language. It was pushing boundaries. Um, and I said, I must have said F you or whatever. And he, you know, took me upstairs. It made me put soap in my mouth and I wash it out. And it makes you think like it was a learning curve. Um, I don't know if I would recommend that technique, but it definitely, it proved the point. And even though you know it's a metaphor, it proves the concept. And I think for me, it's just a matter of discovering where your boundaries lie. Um, uh, I don't think badly of people that swear, but I feel like it's the 
it's got to be context based it's got to have a reason behind it um and if that reason is humor then absolutely fine if it's um just for the sake of saying it depends on the con again it's so contextual it's so very contextual um if someone just randomly starts swearing at me on the street that's not okay if someone messages me and says f you who i don't know then i'm gonna be like no no um so yeah it, it's very it's very contextual um and i haven't really been in too many situations where i've been around kids and had the need to swear and as i said i very rarely swear i said shiver my timbers i know i said this in the in the chat i said shiver my timbers unironically as a curse word <laughs> while playing Skyrim like I think I think that like a, a a dwarven spider jumped out at me I was like oh my god shiver my tempers and then I was like what did I just say um so yeah I think at this point I'm pretty well trained out of it because for me I present myself in a very um that's just how I present myself and I kind of put it as a point of pride um and when I do want to swear, I do swear. Like, I was swearing at Witcher 3 today. Like, I really was. I was fingers up. I was flipping the bird. I was just like, damn, you werewolf, but not using the word damn. So, yeah, when there's a time, there's a place. Anyway, I've talked for 16 freaking minutes. Freaking, freaking fracking, uh, sugar cookies, blimey, um, dang, widget, um, uh there's so many things that i say that aren't actual the few words in the english language vocabulary which are actually swear words um but there we go thank you for watching have a wonderful day i recommend the good place i recommend um watching the safer tv versions of hot fuzz and john of the dead because they are golden for all of the fun funky alternatives to swearing if you so desire um anyway bye Boop.